All right, welcome back to Debrek on this seventh day of April 2020. Of course, waking up to the news that um, uh, there's a um, sort of uh, a partial lockdown that is in Nairobi, and uh, that will also be happening starting tomorrow in Kilifi, Kuala, and Mombasa counties. And of course, the Nairobi area comprises different parts of uh, the country, including the neighboring counties. And just want us to take a look at uh, some of the graphics of what uh, transpired yesterday as announced by President Kenyatta. If you can start uh, with um, the status of the COVID-19 in Kenya. So far, those that have been tested are 4,277. Um, of course, you can compare this with what I was talking about in the U.S. 1.9 million people have been uh, tested of the virus. Now, in Kenya, 4,277. Of those, um, 158 have tested positive. And the people that have uh, been treated or have been uh, under observation and recovered, they are for those that have lost their lives are six and the active cases, they are for 148. If you can uh, move on to the next one to look at... Um, uh, what else has happened here in the country? We know that uh, in order to stem the virus, a 10-hour night national curfew has been uh, declared. That is uh, since, uh, I believe, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, so far, we have uh, 10 hours that is between uh, 7 p.m. and 5 a.m. Then there are travel ban. Uh, there's a travel ban that has been enforced or uh, declared for 21 days that is affecting Nairobi, Mombasa, Kilifi, and Kuala counties um, for the latter three um, they will be starting their um, uh, ban on travel uh, starting tomorrow. Then uh, to stem the virus again, there has been uh, uh, people have advocated or the government has advocated for hand hygiene, uh, use of uh, face masks, the social distancing and also the social gatherings that were have been banned. You're not allowed to be taking part in that. Then the next one, we are talking about... Um, uh, basically, why the cessation of movements in the areas of Nairobi and Kilif in Kuala County is because 82% of the cases of COVID-19 have come from the Nairobi metropolitan. This is also including uh, parts of uh, Kajado County, Machakos County, Kiambu County um, that uh, will also be affected. Then 14% of cases uh, have come from Kilifi, Kuala or Mombasa. Uh, these are the people that have been affected. Then lastly, the impact of this is that there will be an inter-county air travel has been banned starting last night. No flights are allowed to come into Nairobi, wherever they're coming from, from different parts of the country. Uh, for inter-county road transport is restricted. Uh, for instance, you're talking about the coastal region. Um, people that are within Kuala, uh, Kilifi and Mombasa, they may travel in between those three counties, but they cannot be allowed to go beyond uh, those, especially now getting into Taita Taveta or even flying or taking an SGR or Madaraka Express coming to Kenya. That has been stopped and therefore that's where we are. So now I want us to listen to the Principal Secretary in Charge of Interior Affairs, that is Karanja Kibicho, who spoke yesterday just after um, uh, the situation um, that was announced by the President. So he spoke yesterday in detailing what would be happening, the roadblocks that would be uh, mounted at different parts of uh, the country, especially on the entries into the Nairobi Metropolitan. Let's listen to him. There will be a police roadblock at, at the river, a place called Small World. Anybody outside of the Nairobi side at Small World will not be allowed to come into Nairobi and will not be allowed, the person in Nairobi will not be allowed to live through Small World outside Nairobi. There is another roadblock that will be set up at a place called uh, Katani, that is near Mulolongo. There is another one that will be set up at Kamulu. We'll set up another roadblock at uh, Blue Post, a place called Chania Bridge. We'll set another one on Garissa uh, Road uh, for people who will be coming from northeastern and eastern using that route at a place called BAT Junction. We'll set another roadblock at a place called Uplands uh, for people coming from uh, Rift Valley and uh, the Upper Kiambu. We'll have another roadblock at the junction of Rironi Maimahio. We'll have another roadblock just up uh, beyond Gong, uh, because Gong Town is what is uh, defined within the Nairobi Metropolitan. We'll have another one at Kiserian. We'll have another roadblock at Isinya. And finally, we'll have another roadblock at Tinganga. That defines and isolates Nairobi. 
All right, that's the cabinet. I mean, the principal secretary in charge of interior affairs, Karanja Kibicho, talking about what will happen. The roadblocks that will be mounted at different parts of uh, Nairobi and uh, the Nairobi metropolitan. And of course, what this means is that uh, there will be disruption of travel that is in as far as to do with uh, people that have been traveling to Nairobi. And joining us this morning is um, Mr. Simon Kimutai, who is the chairperson of the Matatu Owners Association, as well as uh, Mr. Mbugwa, the chairperson of the Matatu Welfare Association. Uh, Good morning, gentlemen. I want to begin with you, Samuel Kimutai. And now that we see what has happened and the Nairobi Metropolitan will be affected by this, um, what happens now so that, uh, um, how, how does this affect the business per se? Good morning. We know very well that the business has been affected from the word go, from the time uh, we were told, people were told to stay at home and uh, and several other activities that has followed. Um, public transport has been affected immensely, and uh, there is no business anymore. But as uh, patriotic Kenyans, as it said, we will be able to still, still give service to the few people who are traveling. Most vehicles have been parked because it's become an economic fault to operate. Right, and um, even as we get to understand this, you have heard of uh, the roadblocks that have been mounted. I don't know now, <laughs> in your estimation, what happens to these people that have been moving people? For instance, if you're coming from Nyeri to Nairobi, now you cannot go beyond Blue Post. What are they supposed to do in the, in the 21 days? Well, one thing is that we expect everybody to comply. And uh, this is no longer a mouse, a mouse and cats uh, game. Everybody must comply. The, the boundaries have been uh, described. And uh, we as uh, the Matatu One Association, we expect all members to adhere to this directive. Because, uh, you know, this is matters involving death and uh, matters which can, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, the convergence point at times for most Kenyans is public transport because uh, over 90% of Kenyans use uh, public transport to travel from one destination to the other. Mm -hmm. So um, we expect them to, you know, adhere to that, get to the boundaries. There are local ways of doing business. Now, the vehicles flying, for instance, as you've mentioned, Nairobi, uh, Nairobi uh, Nyeri, will have to reorganize themselves to fly the other routes that they can be able to fly. All right. And uh, just before we get uh, Dixon Bugwa on the line, um, when you look at all this, what would it take for you to change route and say, if you come from 2NK Sako, that now you want to change your route from, from Nyeri to Nairobi to maybe uh, Nairobi, I mean, Nyeri to Thika? S Simon, if you can hear me, I'm asking the question. Um, if you uh, are, oh. did you hear the question? Please go ahead. I had the question, I thought you were directing it to Mr. Mbugua. Mm -hmm. Somehow, um, of course, there are the uh, NTSA uh, route allocations, which uh, um, it's very, uh, ev everywhere has uh, uh, vehicles flying. We will only be disadvantaged. I don't know whether the, the police officers would allow people to um, divert from their normal routes, but somehow there is still routes from boundaries back to where they, they, they have been allocated. If it is near Nairobi, uh, it can be near up to very close, maybe thicker. There's still a, a license to do the same because you mm -hmm. describe the points of uh, the towns in between. It would only be unfortunate that they may not be able to get to Nyeri. And besides, anyway, people have not been traveling much because of the fear created by Corona pandemic. Mm -hmm. So um, they, they, I expect them to, 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 to do as it is said, they have to um, um, persevere for the 21 days that have been pronounced mm -hmm. uh, for purposes of spreading this, this, this sort of virus. All, all right, and Simon, so we look at a situation that, yes, you said that uh, over the past few days or weeks, there has not been, the business has obviously been disrupted. Are you able to quantify that in terms of um, money of how much are we talking about that has been lost in the lost opportunities in business? Generally, I will tell you, over 70% of businesses are lost. 30%, which is an economical to operate in, is what uh, uh, is remaining. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why many, many vehicles have opted to park their vehicles because at times to buy insurance for a whole month, 
to pay for uh, uh, the parking fees in towns that you uh, apply through. And uh, at the end of the day, you might not be able to, 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 to pay even salaries for the workers. Mm -hmm. So most circles have reduced their vehicles to a certain number, mm -hmm. but still their, their movements have been affected so much. There are very few people uh, traveling. I would say the traveling ha has been by not less than 70%. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, from your statistics, would you know how many people depend on the matatu industry to survive um, in terms of the absolute numbers, but at the same time, the size of that economy in, in, form, in terms of millions or billions? Um, one matatu supports very many families. You know, the matatu um, has a driver and a conductor. And uh, number two, it has somebody who washes his vehicle. Right. Number three, number three is that uh, it brings, it, uh, hawkers rely on them. You, if you go to bus terminals, mm -hmm. very many people sell their wares because when you bring in um, um, uh, passengers, mm -hmm. they are the hawkers that are other uh, small, small shops uh, 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 customers too. Mm -hmm. So I would say it's enormous because uh, this is uh, an economic facilitator. Mm -hmm. So um, I wouldn't be able to quantify and tell you that uh, this is the exact numbers, but we know it translates itself if a vehicle, for instance, applies uh, um, uh, a 14 seater that does inter intercity or inter towns. Mm -hmm. By end of the day, probably <coughs> could give the owner uh, um, maybe 7,000, 8,000 shillings up to 10 before that is gross mm -hmm. before before it being fueled and uh, you know other payments that are accompanied by that mm -hmm. so you realize that uh, um uh, the amounts lost is enormous it's very not easy to quantify mm -hmm. and uh, um what we are saying is that uh, it, uh, it's it's a big hit to the public transport sector right and we know very well that uh, it's the only way uh, i mean the only way to we don't want to to, to, to disobey and uh, don't get customers in the future because it, we, we've seen in other countries, mm -hmm. uh, Corona has become a, a, a real deadly disease that's wiping out people. So I believe uh, the industry will totally, totally uh, uh, adhere to the directives that have been given. All right. Uh, thank you, Simon. I just stay on the line because now we're being joined by Dixon Bugwa, who is the chairperson of the Matatu Welfare Association. And good morning, Dixon. And even as you assess the situation of what you are learning this morning of the disruption of different routes, and especially those that travel into the city, um, how would you rate the impact that this will have or has already had on the members of the Matatu Welfare Association? Thank you very much. Um Members of the Matatu Welfare indeed are the SACOs. SACOs are the affiliates of the Matatu Welfare Association. Mm -hmm. and then uh, within the SACOs, you have now the individual operators. Um, uh, then that's the investors of the vehicles and the employees. Now, in this situation whereby there is a restriction of movement mm -hmm. um, by Matatus from up country, from other counties apart from Nairobi, mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's an expensive issue um, to the vehicle in investors. Right. Um, look at the figures that we normally have. It is estimated that we have uh, about 18,000 matatus that uh, render their public service in Nairobi and those ending their services from other counties. That's it, a long distance. Eh? Those that have got a license to operate from Nairobi to various counties. Mm -hmm. Now, those are about 30%, which adds up to about 5,400 vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, those are the ones now, now that will not be bringing people to Nairobi. Okay. And uh, that's an expensive kind of a thing for the these investors of the vehicles. Mm -hmm. All right, and even as you look at uh, those numbers, like I asked uh, Mr. Kimutai here if he knows, uh, if he could quantify that loss, are you able to do so from your side? Yes, I can. I am able to, to do, uh, you know, going with that uh, estimate of uh, the PSV that uh, uh, operates in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, so, with this happening, what are what are the alternatives uh, that you think uh, people that are under that welfare can uh, pursue just to ensure that they're able to stay afloat within uh, this intervening period? The, 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 
actually it's, it's very little because you know bearing in mind that these over 5000 uh, PSV vehicles mm-hmm. they are all services license really uh, indicate that they have to operate from say from Kabsate from Kericho from Meru from Embu mm-hmm. to Nairobi that's uh, the, the road services indicate that Right. So they, they are unable to operate within their own areas, um, mm-hmm. their respective counties, because uh, we have other vehicles that are also licensed to operate from those areas. So these vehicles will literally be grounded right. because of those technicalities. And, and Simon, of course, uh, the number of 5,400 is pretty high. So even as you ground this, I don't know what um, the impact will be, especially for investors that have taken loans from different lenders, including banks. What is that impact? And what do you think are some of the measures that you may be trying to look to uh, so that you're able to maintain the stability of uh, the, these owners? Um, we know very well that uh, there was an advice that uh, people negotiate with their finances to be able to, you know, defer the loans for another day because uh, some, some, some time to come. Mm-hmm. Uh, because for sure, uh, most people rely on uh, the, 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 the units they have bought either by the fina- being financed by banks, uh, mm-hmm. they rely on the same business to repay the loans that have been, you know, taken from financial institutions. So for, for, for now, I think everybody will understand. Unfortunately, is that um, it's affecting businesses everywhere. Right. So, um, yeah, so uh, right now, there's nothing that can be done, especially uh, uh, customers to the banks who borrowed the money. And the collaterals were the same. The collaterals were, uh, were, were the vehicles that are the road. So you can't even repossess the vehicle. Whom would you sell it to? So I think uh, uh, most people who have who had who took who, who took the advice actually mm-hmm. uh, must have negotiated negotiated uh, with the financiers to be able to defer their loans for another day right and uh, dixon if you're still on the line so um j- just before yesterday the matatus had been advised that uh, they had been instructed that they have to ensure that um uh, their passenger the passengers that they ferry should not be beyond 60 percent of the capacity of the vehicle um just tell us how much of an impact that was but also the challenges that you are facing in getting hand sanitizers and also what is now becoming the norm of wearing uh, face masks uh, in the first place we were really prepared because uh, just a week ago, or 10 days prior to yesterday, we had trained about 100 uh, uh, terminus stage clerks and circle managers on the do's and the don'ts in regard to COVID-19. And they are, they are aware that um, they need to wash people's hands as with sanitizers as they get into, into the matatus. And those 100 uh, TOT also were expected uh, mm-hmm. to train the rest on the ground. And I believe that one went on very well because we see, and we have been supervising around, we have been seeing them doing exactly what um, we were informed and trained on. Mm-hmm. Um, in regard to the mask, um, it, it's a third order because right now as we are talking, they are still very scanty and uh, they are not available. In fact, that we are assured that um, um, the, 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 the industry the, 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 the textile, the man, other manufacturers mm-hmm. will be bringing them so that at least they can be distributed. Right and now we have a, 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 what, a shortage of them and uh, the, the ones that are available are the ones locally produced um, within our streets and they are not up to the standards um, as expected. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Dixon and uh, Simon, just stay on the line. I want us to listen to a story that was uh, compiled yesterday by Hassan Mugambi on uh, the situation with uh, having sanitizers and, uh, and masks just uh, as a, a means of uh, fighting the coronavirus. Let's just listen to that and then we can uh, engage more on that. Dixon and Simon. High-risk areas, bus stops, public transport vehicles themselves, open-air markets and malls have remained points of bother despite repeated directives. <laughs> Keeping a safe distance has particularly proven a difficult regulation to realize. <laughs> and a day after Transport Cabinet Secretary James Masharia's directive for users and operators of PSVs, President Uhuru Kenyatta today again added his voice to the caution brigade. So fellow Kenyans, having received advice 
from our medical professionals and experts. Today we do say that Kenyans should wear masks while in public places. And with the directives already creating a ballooning market, government is grappling with the issue of standards given the number of players that have come in to help satisfy the demand. The Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Industry and Trade will endeavor to ensure that all these tailors are provided with the right information through the national government administrative officers on the kind of materials required and the proper method of piecing the fabrics together. But while most public transporters offer hand sanitizers to passengers, face masks remain the responsibility of the passengers. <laughs> In Kawangwari, a sport check by Citizen TV established a reluctance by border border operators to buy the masks they are waiting for government supplies. So, I said, I said, I I said, I the government is said to roll out the distribution of more than 1 million face masks locally manufactured by Kitui County Textile Center and Rivertex East Africa to be issued to PSV operators among others. Putting on your mask while in public places will no longer be a matter of choice as the country tries to put in measures to flatten the curve of contingency that would delve a blow and a serious one to the health sector that is already struggling, if untamed. Hassan Mugambi, Citizen TV. All right, Hassan Mugambi reporting about the situation of the masks within the Mayatatu or trans public transport uh, system. And Simon, of course, you hear the voices of the border border operators as well as the drivers and different people that are speaking there. Uh, how much of a challenge has it been to avail these masks uh, for your staffers as well as uh, the hand sanitizers that you're talking about? Well, um, initially the challenge was supply. Mm -hmm. They were nowhere you would uh, purchase them or acquire but it appears now the market is flooded with all these uh, um, necessary tools that would uh, prevent the, the virus and uh, I, I I want it to be known that uh, uh, right now uh, I would say 99.9% .9 of Matato crew are equipped with the necessary uh, gadgets to you know uh, uh, that had, has been recommended so uh, but somehow people must know this is team play in you know, the teamwork Mm. It's their life. The passengers must know it is their lives that's at stake. They have to buy their own sanitizer at the times. Mm -hmm. They've got to also purchase the the, the mask, so that um, we achieve uh, the, the intended purpose. So I think uh, what, what I would say is that uh, the border borders I know would have a challenge, and uh, most of the cases there is defiance amongst its membership. But somehow they should know that it's their lives. Mm -hmm. It's their lives at stake. And they must do what is necessary. They must advise their uh, uh, their customers that they have to put on a mask before they are given a ride. Not to see the money that they are charging first, but they should also be able to see their lives at stake. All right. Um, and Dixon, yes, um, it is the responsibility of every Kenyan. It's teamwork. Um, what do you think should be the best way about, uh, around this? Because the cost of uh, a mask can go uh, as high as 150 for some, others as retailing at 150, I mean 200 shillings. Uh, so if you are to if give free masks to your passengers, then obviously the fare they are paying you would not make any sense. What do you think should be happening and what is the best way forward? The best way forward is really for the industry because they have committed themselves, you know, through the CS as we had <coughs> uh, talking. It's for the the, the industry players uh, that the manufacturer really to come up and uh, up their their production so that at least we are able to they are able to supply us um, to all the the, the, the the industry, the matter to transport sector, also um, our 
taco managers at the termini and also our drivers should be able to provide the passengers so that at least we comply with this issue of uh, the prevention uh, or precautionary measures. Mm -hmm. that, that should be the way forward. The other thing, of course, the sanitizers also, as, although it is complemented by washing the hands at the terminis, right now we have so many not those small tanks with taps and stops where passengers now can wash and even, you know, pass us by. The important thing here is, is to uh, avail adequate stock so that at least all the passengers and uh, the industry, the material transport industry have uh, those sanitizers and the face masks. Okay, all right. As we wind up on this, Simon, so there have been passengers that are complaining that um, uh, the fare has been hiked. Of, of course, one may understand that is because of the reduced number of passengers, but also there has been a call from the government that you shouldn't raise the fare. How do you think is the fare, uh, uh, well, the fare point about the fares? You know, one thing is that uh, when you reduce uh, revenues by 40%, and uh, this is not the profit you make. You can't even decide to declare that you don't make profits for the benefit of uh, uh, those who are using the service. But now, fair was, uh, it was, it was a very simple mathematics that was applied. You take off, I mean, you, 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 you remove, you get the, 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 the passengers removed, the amounts, and divide it amongst the passengers who are in. But you find that uh, uh, the, 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 the increment was done by a very small percentage. To be able to cut up for, to cut up for um, uh, the, 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 the operational costs. So I think at times uh, complaints were not very genuine. I know Kenyans are very sensitive. Even a new hike by maybe 10 shillings, they'll always complain. Not considering that uh, there are costs that need to be taken care of. Okay, all right. Of course, uh, the conversation continues. We're just about to see the impact of that. We have 21 days to observe the situation in Nairobi. But as the president said, it is the initial period. Thank you so much, Dixon Bugwa, the chairperson of the Matatu Welfare Association, as well as uh, uh, Simon Kimutai, the chairperson of the Matatu Owners Association. Uh, thank you for making time for us to have that conversation. And now I want us to focus on uh, the story about um, some of the pictures that we have received of a roadblock that was uh, mounted uh, some t somewhere in Muranga County as people are trying to uh, beat the ban of travel. Let's just take a look at uh, those pictures. You can see uh, that should be, <coughs> excuse me, the <clears throat> excuse me again, that should be the pictures just after uh, the blue post um, uh, what do you call it? Flyover. Uh, the people trying to run home. Uh, this was in the evening. Just uh, it should be actually almost 7 p.m. People trying to run home to avoid being caught in the curfew. Uh, but of course, now that you know that uh, flyover, nobody will be allowed to uh, pass into the Nairobi area or out of the Nairobi area as uh, the travel ban uh, begins. The cessation of movements, as uh, the president called it, and it will be affecting the Nairobi metropolitan uh, area that involves parts of Kajado County, Machakos County, Kiambu County, um, as it begins. And it will be running for about 21 days. I don't know whether you have any natural sounds that you can listen uh, to as we look at those pictures. Right, uh, those are the pictures. Ah, we lost them. We were just seeing uh, the roadblock, <laughs> the, the, the roadblock that you see mounted there, uh, looking at the people that are going beyond at that point. So that would be a constant feature that you'll be seeing each and every other day as um, the people will be barred from crossing into Nairobi as well as out of Nairobi. Let's listen to the Principal Secretary Karanja Kibicho who, say, who spoke about uh, the teams that will be manning these roadblocks and what you should be expecting should you find yourself in such a situation. Blocks. We shall have a multi-agency team composed of uh, the police who are obviously the enforcers of uh, uh, this isolation, uh, the Ministry of Health of Issues to ensure that uh, even the allowed people who will be able to pass 
uh, uh, healthy. They will be doing uh, the simple uh, checks of temperature and the wellness of the people allowed to cross. We will have uh, our national administrators uh, at every roadblock and we will also have uh, people from the National Intelligence Service. It will be a multi-agency team. All right, so you can hear the team that will be manning those roadblocks. So, I mean, don't make a mistake. You don't want to be on the wrong side of uh, the law. So we take a short break. On your return, we have more on daybreak as we continue to look at uh, the impact of the coronavirus disease that has affected Kenya with 158 cases so far reported. Out of those, 10 have had their cases resolved. Six of them have died. Four of them have recovered. So we're talking about active cases at 148. But of course, uh, globally, we are talking about uh, more than 1.3 million people that have contracted the virus, almost 1.4 million now. So we take a short break when you come back, we have more.